Okay, thank you, Wendy. Uh, and uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, thanks for showing up. Um, uh, I think I should give you a little bit of my background first so, you, so I can uh, talk about uh, the, the real topic that I wanted to discuss with you. Um, I started my career as an engineer, so I had a bachelor's and master's degree from uh, RPI in New York and worked for three great companies, really good companies, Procter & Gamble, Frito-Lay, and Nabisco Brands, all doing uh, industrial automation. Uh, so uh, when I left Nabisco Brands, I was director of automation for uh, Nabisco in the United States. Uh, and that was the first time I uh, uh, lost my job, uh, uh, not of my own choosing. So I, uh, uh, when I left Procter & Gamble, I, I went to Frito-Lay uh, to, to uh, take a management position, which P&G wasn't willing to give me, so the heck with them. And then I left Frito-Lay to go to Nabisco for, for a nice big promotion. Um, but, uh, it, you know, recessions happened, and recessions happened then, and, and I lost my job along with uh, hundreds of thousands of others, uh, and uh, that was quite a shock to me. Uh, so what I did after that um, was recover from it. It started as a, somewhat of a setback, but, but I did recover and, and doing very different things. And those different things, while they didn't all seem like stuff I wanted to do at the time, um, they laid the groundwork for me uh, for, for the, the best 18 years of my life. And if it had not been for those uh, sort of, uh, I don't want to do this, but I have to, to, to keep eating stuff, uh, I wouldn't have been able to do what I uh, had just finished doing. So I started by uh, joining a consulting firm. Uh, and uh, I wasn't looking to join a consulting firm. I, uh, I joined them sort of by accident. I was out of work and uh, I was at, at one of these outplacement places and they told me to always have a copy of my resume with me no matter what because uh, you can never tell who you're going to meet. And uh, uh, I was at a, a funeral for a, a gentleman who had uh, dropped dead uh, uh, and uh, I didn't really know him but his wife knew my wife so we were at this funeral and I was in the back of the funeral parlor uh, feeling a little uncomfortable not knowing this, uh, the dead guy. And there were two other guys back there who were, who were kind of looked like they were in the same boat. So I asked them who they were, and they said, well, this, the gentleman who passed away was one of them. They belonged to a consulting firm. And uh, that Monday, this was on a Friday, the funeral was, and that, that following Monday they were supposed to start a brand-new uh, project in the, uh, western Pennsylvania, a few hours' drive from where I was in Morris County, New Jersey. Uh, so I said, well, you know, as it so happens, I'm looking for work. Uh, Let's, let me give you my resume, see if maybe I can help you. So we did. We ducked out of the funeral. We had a little interview there, and they hired me to take the dead guy's job uh, on Monday. Uh, so that's probably the best networking uh, story I've ever r run across, and, it's, and it happened to me. And uh, he, you know, he couldn't do it, so I wasn't, I wasn't hurting him. So uh, I, for a year I worked for this consulting firm, and it taught me uh, a lot about consulting and, and also – uh, convinced me that I did not want to work for a consulting firm. So I spent some time uh, with the Rockwell Automation in sales. That was also a job I didn't want to do. I'd spent most of my engineering life avoiding salespeople, and getting uh, a, an offer to go into sales just, just seemed bizarre to me. I, I turned them down several times before they convinced me that I didn't actually have to have a uh, – uh, I, I wasn't really selling. I would, I would be sort of a consultant to the sales folks to – to help them sell to, to the kinds of people who I knew and understood. And so I was sort of an internal consultant, and that, that was good. And I, I learned a lot about the sales process and, and uh, how it works, and I, and I gained a uh, lot of respect for, uh, for sales by, by doing this, especially for technical sales. And then I, I ran part of a manufacturing company. I ran an engineering business, and the last sort of real job I had uh, uh, took me to Atlanta, where I live now, and where I was the president and CEO of the software company. And that was one of my uh, life goals from very early on, like from being out of school, I wanted to run a company. And so there I was, you know, um, uh, at, at my goal. Uh, and it was interesting and it was fun, uh, but 9-11 um, happened while I was there, and uh, that was the end of that. Our little company folded, and I found myself out of work again. 
uh, this time in Atlanta, Georgia. And Atlanta was a city that I had already chosen as one of the three cities that I would like to uh, live the rest of my life in. And fortunately, uh, that's where I was. So for the next 18 years, I ran my own business, and, and uh, I call it Value Train. Um, I still run it, uh, just not very, uh, very much. Uh, and it's a business that started by accident. I, uh, uh, I belong to a lot of uh, networking groups, and, uh, and a number of folks wanted to get Six Sigma certifications because this was a, after 9/11. It, it, you know, jobs were in very, very short supply, and the availability of people was in very, very high supply. So it was pretty common that if a company was hiring someone and put out a job description, that a thousand people would apply to it, and they couldn't handle that. They just couldn't. So um, that that became, began, uh, began the rise of the uh, online uh, job screening uh, processes, and they would put in things that they needed and things that they wanted to see in resumes and had you fill out forms. And only 20 or 30 of those 1,000 resumes ever got to a human uh, who was going to do the hiring. So they, they let these systems uh, uh, do this, the initial screening. And it was quite common at the time for a Six Sigma green belt or a Six Sigma black belt or a lean uh, certification to be on those screening things. And, and most of us who were uh, in these groups knew all that material, but we didn't have the stamp on our forehead. And the, the courses that, that would give us that stamp were aimed at corporations, and they typically cost four to $8,000. Uh, and while this was a group of executives I was hanging out with, and, and we could have afforded that if we really wanted to. Nobody who's out of work wants to spend that kind of money learning something that they already know just to get a piece of paper. So um, I volunteered. I thought it would, that it would be possible uh, to, to uh, build a class like that very uh, inexpensively. And I uh, found a professor who had just by accident been uh, let go from his university, and he uh, taught Six Sigma. And uh, uh, all of his material belonged to him, and uh, the university licensed it. So when he left, he had all of his material, and, and he was capable of certifying. So I hired him to teach a class. And uh, my first class was, was uh, $200 a person, uh, I just did everything as cheaply as I could and divided the number of people into the money I spent, and it came out to about 200 bucks, and they got their Six Sigma Green Belt instead of spending $8,000. Uh, so that was my community service for that uh, couple of months. Uh, I then went back to job searching, uh, but, but I couldn't do it because my phone uh, would not stop ringing from people who wanted, uh, to, uh, wanted me to do that for them. I said, no. This was a one-shot deal. Uh, so I, I finally gave up and decided I will, I'll do it once a month. Um, but I've, I've already accomplished my initial goal, so I raised the price a little bit so I'd make a little money, and I, I started doing it monthly. And after a while, I realized that I had in my hands the beginnings of what could be a company. So I couldn't make a living by selling cheap Six Sigma courses in Atlanta, but I could by selling not quite so cheap, but still uh, low-priced uh, process improvement courses all over the country. And that's what I did. And for 18 years, I did that, uh, organizing public courses in various cities. Uh, that evolved into corporate training. So after a while, most of my training became corporate. Companies would hire me, and I'd come in and do the class for them. Uh, I started doing consulting uh, services for Lean or Six Sigma or Lean Six Sigma projects. Uh, and most of my consulting came from my uh, uh, from my uh, graduates. So during that time, I trained over uh, 3,000 graduates, uh, which was quite a lot. And I worked from home. Uh, a lot of people don't like the idea of working from home, but I found it relaxing. Uh, I could do what I wanted to do, um, and it worked out great. So why why the today's talk? Today's talk is because. After 18 years of doing essentially the same thing, um, uh, I, I can get bored pretty easily. And I started to get bored doing that. But the part that I loved was the uh, advanced uh, statistics that I taught in the black belt course. And at the time, uh, data science and data analytics was just a screaming hot field and growing like mad. And you couldn't get enough people to do it. So I decided to become a data scientist. So I put my business. 
uh, on hold and uh, pre uh, prepared myself to go be a data scientist. And uh, what I'm going to do here is show you uh, how I did that. And the reason, uh, the reason it's, a, um, it's, a, it's a story, I'm trying to figure out how to move this slide here. Hold on. There we go. Uh, so the reason it's a story is because I was already over 65 years old when I made this decision. Um, so, and the, when I looked at the what I spent my time doing at my value chain business, most of it was selling, marketing, administrative work. So the amount of time I actually got to to do technical work or technical training was was pretty small. As much as I loved it. Um, I didn't get enough of it, so I wanted I wanted to do stuff that was more interesting. And the data science field was a natural evolution to uh, uh, to the t things that you learn if you're a Six Sigma black belt. So that's what I decided. Hi there. I hope you enjoyed that last clip. My name is Michael Maludis, and if you'd like to watch the full 60 minutes of that last webcast, while also gaining complete unlimited access to our entire library of IT learning, simply visit our subscribe page at greatpro.org slash subscribe. Unlimited annual access is $199 per year, but if you use the coupon code learn to earn you can drop that membership fee to just $149. That's less than $13 per month for unlimited access to over 1,000 hours of on-demand career development, covering the entire spectrum of IT management best practices, including business analysis and requirements, software development, quality and testing, risk management, process improvement, project management, and even digital transformation. But your membership doesn't just give you unlimited access to our vast learning library. You also get free access to our mobile app, as well as direct access to our network of over 300 of the world's leading IT consultants, all of whom are dedicated to putting practical knowledge at your fingertips so that you can learn more and earn more. I hope you will join me in becoming a member of The Great IT Professional and advancing your career with us. And if you're on YouTube, don't forget to hit that subscribe button above so that you get notified whenever we publish new free webcasts each week of the year. Thank you for your time and best wishes for your continued success.